So, without any further ado, if you'd like to join me the other side of this technical property, we can talk a little bit about more makes generation four and the V and the H of the vanquish. So, I bonded aluminium monocoque. We don't actually use the same heat cured epoxy that we used back in 2004. We developed a brand new adhesive back in 2007. That's what we now use. It's more uh, energy efficient, it has a shorter cure time, so the basic structure of the car is bonded together from aluminium. But the big story on this car, as you can see, because we've exposed it here in all its glory, is a full carbon fibre skin. Bonnet, fenders, as we go to the rear of the car, this section, the DOR, the door opening rig, incorporating the rear fender, all this section, all the way around there, one carbon fibre assembly. Move to the rear of the car, Marek will talk a little bit more detail about how design and engineering come together, because that's where the best automotive technology comes from. It's where the engineering complements the design aspiration. At the rear of the car, we have this integrated aerodynamic device, which you could not make out of metal. So whilst the carbon fibre does save us mass on the car, about six kilos, one of the great things about using carbon fibre is you can create shapes and forms that you can't create out of aluminium or steel. So that's the big news on the V. What I'd like to do is talk to you about some of the systems, the H's. At the heart of any great sports car, of course, is its engine. And I'm delighted to say this is the new Aston Martin V12. It is new. It's the six litre still. But once I've said that, that's all really it's got in common with the old engine. It has a new cylinder block. It has new cylinder heads. It has new cam covers. It has a new inlet manifold. It has a new valley brace. It has new variable valve timing on both the inlet and the exhaust. It has knock sensing. It is new technology. It's more powerful by about 9%. It's more fuel efficient by about 9%. It also sits lower in the chassis of the car by 19 millimetres. That's important. It's not 20 or 22, it's 19. And the reason it sits lower in the chassis is it enables us to get a better weight distribution and it's enabling for future cars, including the DB9, pedestrian protection compliance. We've done lots of work on occupant protection around the years. Now the new DB9 fully pedestrian protection compliant. This car protected for them. How long does it take to develop an engine like that? Because normally when you, when you develop a new engine, I mean, you it sometimes use a joint forces of yep. between Volvo and another big ma manufacturer. Given your relatively little size, I mean, how do you do it? Good news is we've got a great partner. Yeah. I'm glad you've asked exactly. that question because this allows me to demonstrate the role of 177 at Aston Martin. One of the roles of 177, of which there is at least one car over there, was to act to allow both Marek and myself to free think about engineering and about design. And we partnered on the engine with Cosworth on our 7.3 litre, normally aspirated V12 engine for the 177. We believe it's the most powerful, normally aspirated road car engine in the world. And when we set off on that journey in 2007, we actually developed technologies that went into this engine, like the variable valve timing, like the knock sensing, like some engine management strategies. So what that actually allowed us to do was to reduce the development time for this engine. So to do this engine, around about 30 months in total, very quick. Did you say one, one, three or three zero? Three zero. Yeah, one course, three would be a miracle. Of course, three good, zero, good, 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 <laughs> 30. Side, 30 course, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah so, it, it is. Uh, so, so new engine, new technologies. What else have we done on the shared system? New steering rack. But let me walk you around to the back of the car because it's a bit that's Sorry. usually buried away that I'm quite proud of. Having a look around the deck lid, so we'll talk about this, this integrated aero device. But if I pop open the car, this is all carbon fibre as well. The trunk lid surround, the whole of the luggage floor is a different type of carbon fibre to this, but the whole of the structure from the firewall back is what we call C2F3P. It's a spray form carbon fibre as well. But the bit that I'd like to draw your attention to, buried deep down underneath the trunk floor, is a new exhaust muffler. Not the most sexy thing in the world, but it is responsible for that wonderful noise that comes out the back of the car. Also inspired by 177. If you to look under the cars on the ramp over there, mm. you will see the geometry of the 177. It's the same as this part. 
So we developed it off the back of that. It's lighter by about nine kilos. It gives a wonderful exhaust note, particularly in the sport mode. So I hope you can see how we use 177 as effectively a technology pilot, as well as generating 77 what fantastic one million pound cars to inform what we do on this car. The other bit that you'll see when you drive the cars is our new integrated infotainment system. It brings together audio, navigation, telephone into one system. Again, derived from the 177. So Vanquish moves the VH architecture on. We've got new elements of the body structure and we've got new elements of the shared horizontal systems into the